In 2023, the housing market is undergoing a peculiar phenomenon, a reverse crash. Many people were expecting that higher mortgage rates would cause a housing crash, but it doesn't seem to be happening. The real estate market is really perplexing, and today I'm gonna break the things down that people ask me about all the time. They say to me, Kathy, when will interest rates go down, and why are the housing prices not going down yet? And why are the homes staying on the market longer if there's such demand? And my favorite is, why is there such a low selection of homes to choose from. In this video, I'll be covering these things and what they mean if you're a buyer or a seller in the Orlando, Florida market. Hi, I'm Kathy Williams with Team Williams and Compass, and we are your Orlando relocation experts. So first, let's talk about the rising interest rates. We've seen them get as high as 8% this week, and still we haven't seen a significant decrease in home prices. Now, there's a lot of things that can play into this whole trend. However, I think one of the biggest factors that we must look at is the fact that most homeowners, approximately 92% of those with mortgages, enjoy rates below 6%. And a lucky, lucky 62% of those have rates under 4%, according to Go Banking Rates. Dot com. Now, if you have that interest rate, God bless your heart. If you have an under 4% rate, that's amazing. And even if you have a rate below 6% at this point, that's amazing too, because we're looking at interest rates at around 8%. So yeah, even 6% sounds really good at this point. Now, let me ask you this. Are you less likely to sell your house if you currently have a 3 or 4% interest rate to then go buy another house at 8%? Bingo! The answer is yes, you are less likely to sell when you have a low interest rate. And that is a big part of what's going on in our market right now. There's such a difference between the interest rates that most people have on their homes and the current interest rates. People are just holding on to their homes. They don't want to sell them because in certain cases they think they might have to downsize in order to buy their next house. On the other hand, what people don't realize about the market is that if you have purchased your home back when the interest rates were under 4% or more, then likely you have a good bit of equity in your home. I mean, you could easily have 10 to 25% in equity in your home. And what could that equity buy you? Well, that can buy you a huge down payment, plus it gives you the opportunity to buy down the rate. There's a great program called a 2-1 buy down that allows you to buy down the rate for the first two years. So let's say you're approved at 7.5%. For the first year, the rate's 5.5, second year 6.5, and in year three, the rate returns to what you were originally approved for, the 7.5%. But you can also buy down that prevailing rate. So let's just say you're at 7% right now, and you can buy it down to 6%, and then do the 2-1 buy down, which means you start at 4% the first year, 5% the second year, and then 6% would be the rate for the rest of the life of the loan. And a lot of people just really don't know about these buy down tools. So they're holding on to their mortgage and just thinking there's just no other option for them. So I do realize that that's quite a rant. And if you need more information, I can connect you with a lender who can explain all the details of the options of doing a buy down rate. And get this, many times we can get the seller to make a concession for your buy down. In other words, we can negotiate for the seller to help buy down the rate for the buyer. Like we talked about before, one of the main reasons we have such low inventory right now is because of the higher interest rate that have caused people not to want to sell their home and trade their low rate in for a high one. And we still have a good amount of buyer demand. Even though we have less buyers in the market, we still have buyer demand. And buyers don't have as many options to look at in the Orlando area. We have less than two months of inventory, which is extremely low. But it's not as low as it was back in 2021 when we had two weeks of inventory. So two months may seem like a lot of inventory, but it's still limited to compared to the demand that buyers have. Also, according to this article, a recent study revealed that approximately 27% of homeowners would be motivated to sell if rates got down to 5% or lower. And more than half of the homeowners surveyed would consider listing if the rates went down to 4%. So this is pretty simple math. But if I put two and two together, it seems that this study is saying that once rates hit 5%, a bunch of people are likely to be putting their houses on the market. And guess what? They likely all have to buy another house and other people will jump into the market too. So there could be a at least 27% increase in the number of buyers and homes on the market if the rates go back to 5%. And if the interest rates lower even more, there could be even a larger percentage of people coming into the market 
on both selling and buying sides. That, my friends, is a lot of activity. A 27% increase is a lot, but 50%, well, that would be that would be insane. I can't even think about that. But I have to say, I don't see the interest rates going back to 4% anytime soon. However, it is possible that we could get back to 5% in the next year and a half, according to economists. This is why I go back to my simple math deducing the one plus one equals two math to say that once those rates go down to five percent we have more people buying plus more people selling and needing to subsequently buy the demand is going to increase a lot and guess what is going to happen to home prices because of this demand right now home prices are holding steady and we're not seeing big decreases in prices here's the state of the market for orlando which is displaying the latest data we have for September. For Orlando, the median prices are up year over year. Okay, I get it. It's a whopping 1.4%, but my point is it's holding well despite the interest rates. If, in fact, the interest rates do come down in the next 12 months and they get close to 5%, the chance that house prices will go up because of buyer demand is very realistic. Worst case scenario, it becomes a more balanced market and we have more inventory and we have more buyers, so it balances a little bit. But the idea that I keep hearing from people that prices are just gonna go down, there's really no data to support that here in Orlando. Now, let's talk about what could drive house prices down and how likely that is to happen. By the way, if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates like this one. Now here's another article. According to JP Morgan, home sales have come down a lot, but activity has not come down because the market is struggling or a bubble is bursting. It's come down because people are staying put, which goes back to the original article that I noted that said most people are staying put and waiting for the interest rates to come down to 5% before they sell. They also noted that if we look at month supply now versus before the pandemic, we're not even close to the levels we had then which is what I was talking about a couple minutes ago. Recently, prices have just kept going up. And I can tell you that yes, pre-pandemic in Orlando, we had about three months of inventory on average, which is still low for that time, but you could find a house with three months of inventory, you could find what you wanted pretty reasonably. But now it's still hard with the buyers that I'm working with. There's not a lot of inventory and it, it creates a challenge. On the seller side, just recently, I had a listing and it was in Oviedo, which is a small community outside of Orlando. It's a suburb of Orlando. And it was listed at 959,000. We had multiple offers within a couple days. And another area, which is Mineola, it's west of Orlando. I had a listing of this cute little house. It was 365,000. Within a couple of days, we had multiple offers as well. If the house is priced right and in good condition, it will sell within a pretty reasonable time frame in the Orlando area. So let's look at that as well in Orlando for September. Home sat on the market an average of 41 days, and in 2022 is an average of 31 days. Home are sitting a little bit longer but it's staying steady over the past few months it's been between 39 to 41 days on average so the factors that are influencing a reverse housing crash are the fact that we still have a low supply of homes as a result of sellers staying put and also the fact that we still have some new construction challenges new construction is not keeping up with the demand either we also have fewer foreclosures so right now in this market it absolutely crushes my heart to think of anybody going into foreclosure because we have such low inventory that if you were able to get your home on the market, there is a huge chance that you, you've got equity in your home that you could walk away with. And yes, maybe you couldn't buy another house right away, but you would have money to put in the bank for savings or an emergency fund or even a future home. So for me, even hearing of one foreclosure in this market is completely heartbreaking. And to me, it's totally avoidable. What does this mean for buyers and sellers in this market? Well, if you're thinking of buying a home this year, well, you are in a tricky spot because you may be tempted to wait for the interest rate to drop. But if you do wait too long, you could be dealing with a surge in home prices as buyers enter into the market with lower rates. And although mortgage rates may not be ideal, remember to check with your lender about the 2-1 buy down and the option to buy down the rate. As a seller, if you have equity in your home, then you would have the money to pay for the buy down of the interest rate. And in many cases, the sellers will pay for that. In this market, if you're thinking of selling right now, we do have low inventory. So even though the market is a little tricky because we do have less buyers, if your home is in good condition, and it's priced right, it'll sell really well. And if you're also buying, then you have the opportunity to leverage the potentially better prices that you can get now and use your equity to buy down the rate. 
The bottom line is that we are in a unique time right now. In some areas, home prices are continuing to rise, even if it's at a decelerated pace, like I showed you in the chart. I mean, 1.4% would definitely be considered an increase in the market, but at a decelerated rate. The market indicators really do offer an overall positive look while the demand may decline and our pandemic induced housing boom has slowed way down, meaning we're getting a bit more of a slight reverse in the housing market instead of a full on crash that we looked at back in 2008. If you'd like some additional resources as a seller or a buyer, we have a few free resources you can find in the description box below. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye now.